right, so example two in 7.6. Solve for theta is in between zero inclusive and all the way to two pi not inclusive, okay? So A, there's only one question in example two. Cosine of a double angle, so cosine two theta times cosine of theta minus sine of two theta times sine of theta equals one over two. Now, just because in your video notes or when I'm lecturing, I'm doing, um, I'm solving or doing a problem one way, doesn't mean that's the only way that you have to do it. Yes, you can do it whatever way you would like as long as you come up with a consistently correct answer, okay? So when I see cosine of two theta times cosine of theta minus sine of two theta times sine of theta, that kind of reminds myself of an identity. So what do I mean by that? I mean by cosine of alpha times cosine of beta minus times sine of alpha times sine of beta. This is an identity for cosine. Would you agree? It's cosine of alpha plus beta. Okay, so let's, well, What's alpha and what's beta? Okay. Well, alpha is this. Well, according to this, do you see that's kind of like that? See all the alphas? I'm going to highlight it in yellow. What's beta? Beta is all of this, right? Okay. So when you see this, I'm, I'm going to go backwards. Okay. So here's the beta with the yellow back. Okay. So if you can see this, alpha, all the yellows are two theta, okay? So if you see this, alpha is two theta, and beta, it's really in essence just theta. So beta and theta didn't really change except the variables. So what I'm gonna do is this whole thing, okay? Going backwards is cosine of alpha is two theta plus theta is now beta, or beta is now theta, I should say. So now I'm gonna set it equals to one half. Okay, well, two theta plus another theta is now three theta equals one half. Well, cosine is regular function. There's no restriction. Um, and cosine is pause of one half in quad one and in quad four, okay? In quad one, cosine of a one half tells me that I need to be, now you're gonna tell me, fill in the blank. What angle do you think I need to have for cosine to be one half in quad one. Did you say pi over three? Beautiful. How about in quad four? Remember, the restriction for theta is from zero to two pi, okay? So we have to go a full revolution. Did you say five pi over three? Great, okay? So from here, you're gonna break this up. Three theta, is pi over three. I'm solving for one theta. So I'm gonna go in and multiply each side by one third, okay? So that means one theta is pi over nine. Then I break it up down here. Three theta equals five pi over three. I'm gonna go in and solve for one theta. So one theta, multiply both sides by one third, so that and that's canceling. One theta is five pi over six, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, pi, five pi over nine. Now keep in mind that I need to, theta need to go from zero all the way to two pi. So now I need to find this magical thing called the period, okay? Period of any cosine is two pi divided by absolute value of b. Well, here's the equation. I wanna make sure I highlight this correctly. Here's the equation that I have, okay? Um, so what is the period? Ooh, right there, okay. It's two pi. Your b value is this three right here. So two pi divided by absolute value of three is still three. So the period is two pi over three. Notice how you have two answers already. The first one is theta is pi over nine and the second one is five pi over nine. Well, if it's with denominator of nine, I might as well convert it now, right? So that means I multiply this by three, that means this is three, so this is six pi over nine. 
So if I keep adding 6 pi over 9, I would get all of my answers. And hopefully it's not before 18 over 9, because 18 over 9 is at 2 pi. So pi over 9 plus 6 over 9 is now 7 pi over 9. So that's going to be my next angle. So theta equals 7 pi over 9. I like that. Okay. Then because it's not anywhere near 18 over 9 yet, so I'm just going to go back and add some more, right? I'm going to go back and add a period, and a period is 2 pi over 3, or with denominator of 9, 6 pi over 9. So now, this will give me a theta, a new theta, of 13 pi over 9, okay? Well, I can go and add 6 pi over 9 some more, but that will be me 19 over 9, and remember, our goal is to stop at 18 over 9. So this is the first 3. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to go and add a period, 6 pi over 9, okay? So that means my next theta, it's 11 pi over 9. I'm going to add some more, okay? I like that because that's an answer that I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep adding until I reach near, okay, 18 over 9. So if I add that, would you agree my next angle is going to be 17 pi over 9, okay? And that's as close as we are going to get because 18 over 9 is 2 pi and we can't even include 2 pi. So these are all of the answers for theta. And guess what? I'm going to have to write it all down and let's try to do it from smallest to biggest. Theta is pi over 9, okay? 5 pi over 9, 7 pi over 9, 11 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9, and 17 pi over 9. And we have a total of 2, 4, 6 answers. So hopefully um, you are able to understand that. If you didn't, then please do go back and listen to it again. Example 3 from section 7.6, okay, the direction says use the information given about the angle, which is called theta, and theta is restricted between 0 to 2 pi, inclusive at 0, but not inclusive at 2 pi, to find the exact value of, and then we have 1i, 2i, 3i, 4i, 5i, and 6i, okay, so let's slowly work this out. Make sure we're neat, okay? Doesn't look like I gave you too much space, so I'm going to try my best to uh, fit it all in here, okay? If not, we'll just get a new piece of paper. So we're going to start with sine of 2 theta. This is a double angle, so we will need to use the double angle formula for sine of 2 theta. But let's start out with looking at the given information, okay? They said, hey, cosine of theta is negative 2 over 5, and theta is in quadrant number 3. So what I would do first is I would draw this triangle out, and I would draw it up here since I know I will have a limit, a limited space, okay? So here's quad 3. That's why I'm just going to focus on this. So quad 3, let's draw the triangle, okay? Theta, it's in quad 3. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Then I would need to find that y value. Let's use Pythagorean theorem. So y square is what I'm looking for, plus negative 2 square equals 5 square. So y square plus 4 equals 25. Move the 4 over, so y squared equals 21. So you know y is going to be square root of 21. Okay? Now because y is in quadrant number 3, it will also be negative. So now I have a negative square root of 21. So now that we have the triangle given to us, we will now write down the identity for double angle of sine, which is 2 sine of theta cosine of theta, okay? Well, I know exactly what sine of theta is, right? Sine of theta is going to be, look back at the triangle, whee, right there, okay? So sine of theta is going to be negative 2 over 5, 
but first let's drop down the 2. Okay. Sine its opposite over hypotenuse, so that's negative 2 over 5, times cosine of theta. Cosine of theta, oops, I did that completely wrong, did I? Sine is opposite, which is negative rad 21 over 5. Cosine of theta is given to us right here, which is negative 2 fifths, or you can even look at adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the same thing, negative 2 over 5. I'm sorry about the sign. Sign is opposite, so we are now correct at negative rad 21 over 5. Now we are going to slowly distribute this out, so we are going to have a positive 4 rad 21 all over 5. Rad 21, we can't, I'm sorry, over 25. Oh my gosh, sorry, I'm having an off day. Um, which happens a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, rad 21. Can't simplify any further, so guess what? That is my final answer for 1i, okay? Now let's do two eyes. I'm gonna use a different color because I know I'm gonna be running out of space. I'm gonna try my best to squeeze that all in here. Two i says that I'm looking for cosine. You know what, let me move it up because I know I'm gonna need all the space, okay? Two i, cosine of two theta. Now, Cosine a double angle is gonna you're gonna have a bunch of different identities three to be exact so I'm gonna pick one that's gonna be easiest for me now the reason I picked this one is because the original was already given to us as cosine I don't have to find sine so I'm just gonna use um, what's given originally so now we have two times quantity negative two over five I will square that then I will subtract one. Then from here, we're gonna work out the math slowly. So two times, this is four over 25. Take away one. We're just gonna give eight over 25. Subtracting one is like subtracting 25 over 25 due to common denominator. So now I will end up with a negative 17 over 25. So this is the final answer for cosine of a double angle. Next, we will go over to do three eyes, okay? Now, all of these are really applying the identities, okay? So if you have it memorized, then it's just going to be so much easier for you. Now, do you have to memorize them? Yes, you are not going to be provided at all um, of any of these identities, okay? So three I sets, you are asked to find sine of a half angle, okay? Now, the sine of half angle is, you're going to start with a plus or minus, Okay, then I'm going to do a radical, 1 minus cosine of theta all over 2, still under the radical. Then from here, I have to decide, okay, is it positive, is it, is it negative? Now let's look at what theta is. Theta is in quadrant number 3, okay. So what if I'm doing half? Half means I'm dividing it by two, okay? So let's take this right here. This is what theta is. Let's take this over here, okay? Just to make it bigger. Theta divided by two, okay? That means I would also have to divide the left side of the inequality by two. And I would also have to divide the right side of the inequality by two. Dividing by two is like multiplying by a, a half. So now half of theta, it's going to be pi over 2 to 3 pi over 4. Where is that? Pi over 2 is right here, right? And then 3 pi over 4 is right here. So you are in quadrant number 2. So half angle is really in quad 2. In quad 2, sine would be positive. I'm writing the positive down, but eventually I'm not going to uh, because, you know, I don't need to carry the positive, right? Positive is... If it's negative, I would definitely have to carry it throughout. So here we go. 1 minus cosine of theta. It's already known. Back to here. Okay. So cosine theta is a negative 2 divided by 5. Divide all of this by 2, which I'm going to write it as a multiplication of a, a half. Then from here, let's do some basic math. Big radical again. I'm going to find the common denominator, which is now 5 over 5. Two additions make a positive. I'm sorry, two subtractions make a positive, two-fifths times a half, okay? This is going to give me seven over five times a half. So that's going to give me what? What would that give me? 
7 over 10, okay? Now, that's like radical 7 over radical 10, which now I need to rationalize the denominator. Okay, so here comes my final answer. Are you ready? Big radical 70 all over 10, okay? And radical 70 is 7 times 10, which neither one of those is going to help us simplify. All right, so that is 3i. Now we are going to do 4i. I'm, I'm going to use different color. 4i is half angle of cosine. Okay, let's move it over here. Now, just to remind you, if you need to pause to finish copying, then do so, okay? So cosine of a half angle over 2 equals, again, plus or minus, big radical 1 plus cosine of theta divided by 2. Now, we have to go back and decide whether we pick negative or positive, okay? Earlier, we mentioned about half angle. And half angle of theta is in quadrant number number 2, okay? The original theta, oops, original theta was in quad 3, but half of it's now in quad 2. In quad 2, cosine is definitely going to be negative. So now I have to carry the negative sign in front all the way through. So now I'm going to write 1 plus negative cosine is negative 2 over 5 okay because that's what we have right here okay now dividing by 2 is like multiply by 1 half so i'm going to do that then from here i will slowly simplify this common denominator again which is 5 over 5 take away 2 over 5 now times a half again okay i'm out of space so that goes here which is now still negative in the front 5 over 2 minus 2 over 5 is now going to be 3 over 5 times a half is now 3 over 10. So now 3 over 10 is exactly the same as negative rad 3 over 10. I would now have to rationalize the denominator. So here comes the finale, negative answer, rad 30 all over 10. And that is my final answer for four eyes. All right, let's see. So that's one eye, two eyes, three eyes, four eyes. We have two more, okay? Tangent of double and tangent of a half. So notice how we're kind of doing all of them, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, let's use green, okay? We are going to do five. Tangent of a double. Tangent of a double. Here we go. For this tangent of a double, I'm using this identity. I'm using two tangent of theta all over one plus sorry, 1 minus, 1 minus tangent square of theta, okay? So from here, I'm going to slowly find out what tangent is. So work with me, okay? So here we go. Let's go back to the triangle. Tangent is going to be opposite, okay? So tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So opposite is negative 2. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Opposite is not negative 2. Opposite is negative 20, 21 over adjacent, which is negative 2. So this is opposite. This is adjacent. Okay. So opposite is negative root 21 over negative 2. So a negative over negative is going to be a positive. Okay. So tangent of theta is positive root 21 over 2. So let's start writing. I'm going to bring down the 2. Okay. And we just mentioned that tangent, it's opposite, which is negative rad 21 over negative 2, which is a positive rad 21 over 2. Okay, that's my numerator. Divided by 1 minus tangent square. I already have the tangent, so I'm just going to put the square. Square root of 21 over 2. Then from here, I'm going to slowly work this out, cancel out things when I can. I can totally make the 2 into a fraction, so these two will cancel. Okay, so on the top, I now will have square root of 21 divided by, on the bottom, I will distribute the square power. So here we go. When I distribute the square power, I would now have 1 minus, rad 21 squared is 21. 2 squared on the bottom is now 4. Then from here, I'm going to attempt to find common denominator. Okay, so now it's going to be rad 21, still, all over, 4 over 4 
minus 21 over 4. So now I've got 21 on the top still, all over. 4 take away 21 is going to be a negative 17 over 4. Now when you're dividing fraction, that's like multiplying, it's reciprocal. I will make the numerator over 1, okay? Times the reciprocal is 4 over negative 17, or you can put the, the negative in the front. Then from here, I will have negative, I'm going to put the negative on the top, 4 rad 21 all over 17. And this is as far as I can go in terms of simplifying. Because 21 is 3 times 7, and that's not going to help us out at all, okay? So that is 5i's. We have one last one, which is 6i. 6i is going to ask us to um, do the half angle of tangent, okay? So here we go. 6i's. Now, if you don't have enough space, um, just do it on the back of your notes or on scratch paper, and just, um, you can just attach it, okay? 6i is asking us to do tangent of a half angle of theta. So I'm going to use sine of half angle divided by cosine of half angle. I'm pretty sure that there are other formulas or other ways that you can find half angle, but this to me is one less thing for me to memorize, okay? So I'm going to use 1 minus cosine of theta all over radical 1 plus cosine of theta, okay? And then again, this still plus or minus the front, so we have to decide. Let's go back to our half. Half angle, it's going to be in quad 2, or was decided earlier from calculation, it's in quad 2. So because it is in quad 2, I'm going to pick the negative for tangent. So negative, big radical, 1 minus cosine earlier was given in the original problem right here, okay, as negative 2 fifths. So negative 2 fifths divided by 1 plus negative 2 fifths, okay. From here, there are multiple ways to simplify, okay? So you go and simplify um, whatever method you wish. I'm just going to start with finding common denominator. So here the negative over. Common denominator is 5 over 5 plus 2 over 5, okay? Divided by 5 over 5 minus 2 over 5. And keep on going. So here we go. So on the top, I will have a negative square root of 7 over 5, okay? All over, on the bottom, I would now have a square root of 3 over 5. Two different radicals can be put together as one big radical, so keep that in mind. So 7 over 5, like divided by, big one, big radical, 3 over 5, like that. When you're dividing fractions, it's like multiplying by a reciprocal, so here we go. 7 over 5 times 5 over 3. That's the reciprocal. So now that's the case. I will cancel out my 5s, okay? And I would now have a negative radical 7. Because it's under one big radical, now I will break it out to make smaller. The reason is that some of you will understand how I rationalize better when I break it apart. So this will lead me to a negative square root, oops, equals to negative square root of 21 all over 3. And this is my final answer for 6i's, tangent of a half angle. Now, if this seems really confusing, please do pause, um, you know, rewind a little bit wherever you were stuck at. I wrote down every single step that I can think of. Um, if, it's, if it's still not clicking, please ask me questions um, in class. And you have a wonderful day. You can celebrate because example four, establish the identity, is our last example in 7.6 notes, okay? So here we go. Cosecant of 2 theta equals half times secant of theta times cosecant of theta. Now, when you are establishing an identity and it has half angle or it has double angle, then that's the side that you want to start with, okay? So always start on the double angle identity. So my step one, I would do cosecant of the double angle. I never really gave you any identity that dealt with cotangent, cosecant, or secant. 
but that doesn't mean I can't find it. Cosecant is just typically 1 over sine of a double, okay? So cosecant of a double is 1 over sine of a double. Well, I definitely know what sine of a double is. Sine of a double angle is 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta, okay? Well, my goal, here's my goal. I want it to be 1 half times secant of theta times cosecant of theta. Well, 1 divided by anything, I um, can break this up, is really 1 over 2 times 1 over sine of theta times 1 over cosine of theta. Because when you multiply, you multiply across. So all the numerators are still 1. So, well, step 5, 1 half is 1 half. 1 over sine is cosecant of theta, and 1 over cosine is secant of theta. Even though I switched the cosecant and secant, but guess what? It doesn't matter because in trig, I'm sorry, in multiplication, um, you can move things back and forth, right? You can multiply 2 times 3 is three, the same as 3 times 2, so it's totally okay. And because this looks exactly the same, I am so done, yay! And guess what? Isn't this beautiful? Video notes is done. Have a wonderful day.